everyone, welcome to another episode of Maya Elin Talks. Today we will talk about Avatar 2, The Way of the Water. But first, a note of the host of this podcast. I would appreciate it if you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share the channel with your friends and family. 16 years after the Navi repelled the RDA invasion of Pandora, Jake Sully lives as chief of the Omatakaya clan and raised a family with Neteri, which includes sons Netiyam and Loak, daughter Tuk, and adopted daughter Kiri, born from Grace Augustine Inert Avatar. Spider, the Pandora's born human son of the late Colonel Mouse, Courage frequently visit their children while being raised by the scientist who stayed on Pandora. To the novice, this made the RDA, led by their new leader, Francis Ardmore, return to colonize Pandora as Earth is dying due to Ecoside. Among the new arrivals are recombinants, Navi avatars implanted with the memories of deceased human soldiers. Krewitz's recombinant serves as their leader. A year later, Jake leads the guerrilla campaign against the RDA during a counterinsurgence mission. Courage and his subordinates capture Jake's children. Jake and Terry arrive and free them, killing several of the Courage soldiers. But Spider is captured by Courage, who recognized him as his son. After the RDA feels, fails to get information from Spider, Courage decides to spend time with his son to draw him in to his side. In turn, Spire teaches Courage about the Navi culture and language. Aware of the danger posed by Spire's knowledge of his whereabouts, Jake and his family exile themselves from the Omatakaya and retreat to Pandora's eastern seaboard, where the Natkiana clan gives the refuge. There, the family learns the way of the reef people. Kiri develops a spiritual bond with the sea, and Loak befriends Tiara, the daughter of Chief Tonowari, and his wife Wonai. After defending Kira against Tonowari's son Anong, Loak apologizes as Jake's insistence. Anok, as his friends, then and tries Loak to a trip into a sea predator territory and leaves him stranded. Loak saved from the predator and befriended by Payakan, a token, an intelligent and pacific whale-like species. From the Matakaya considered their spiritual brethren. Upon his return, Loak wins annoying his friendship by taking the blame for the trip, but, are to but is told that Poyakan is an outcast among the Tolkien. Leiti links to the Metakayinas underwater spiritually and spiritually meets her biological mother Grace, whose consciousness lives within Pandora. During the link induced trance, Kiri suffered a seizure and falls unconscious, nearly drowning. Jake summoned Norm Spellman and Max Patel for help using their medical equipment, where they diagnosed Kiri with epilepsy and warned that she cannot connect to the spirit tree again, as doing so may kill her. Although Lonal saved Kiri, Currents tracks Norm and Max aircraft to the archipelago where the 
met de kajaal leden. Bringing Spider with him, Courage joins forces with the RDA's Marine Corporation, led by Captain Nick Soresby, and commandeers a whaling vessel that hunts tokens to extract an anti-aging serum called Amirita. Quirrell's squad creates the archipelago, interrogating the tribe about Jake's location to no avail. Quirrell then ordered the whalers to kill tokens near the village to draw Jake out. Lowak mentally links with Payakan and learns that he was cast out because he went against the Pacific way of his species and attacked the whalers who killed his mother, causing many deaths. When the medical Yina learned of token killings, Lowak rushes off to warn Payakan, following by his siblings and friends. They find Payakan being hunted and Quirits captures Lowak, Syria and Tuck, Jake, Niteri and the Medikina set out to confront the humans and rescue the kids. Quirits force Jake to surrender, but Payakan attacks the whalers, triggering a fight between the Mayakian and the humans. Spider cripples the vessel and Netiam rescued Lowak, Chiria and Spider, but is fatally shot by one of the clerk's men. Devastated, Jake and Atiri go back to save their remaining children that were recaptured. Jake faces Quirits, who uses Kiri as a hostage. When Atiri does the same with Spider, Quirits at first denies their relationship, but this is once Neoteri cuts Spider across the chest. Jake Quirich, Jake Quirich, Neoteri and Tug end up trapped inside the sinking vessel. After a tense skimmage, Jake st strangles Quirich unconscious and is rescued by Lowak and Payakan. While Kiri recovers Nikiri and Tug. Spider rescued Quirich but refuses to go with him and rejoins Jake's family, who welcomes him as his true son. At the Nathalem's funeral, Jake informs Tonawari of his decision to leave the Metekayina. Still, the chief respectfully identifies Jake as part of the clan and claims and welcomes him as his family to stay. Before vowing to resume their campaign against the RDA, Jake and his family accept and live their li new life at sea. So as I told you before guys, I really love Avatar and I know there are a lot of people who had credits uh, about this movie and on James Cameron and how he did it. I really like this. A movie uh, although I can um, identify myself with some of the critics and comments uh, what I really love about this again is there are a lot of lessons in it lessons of mother nature and the other thing is is that um, I think Jake will never have that peace because Jake is one of uh, Pandora's uh, people and but also he has the nose of humans and the st scary part of is that the avatars who have the memories of uh, the deceased people um, it was a bit 
I could see the danger in that. Cause how much more can you do with it? You know, it's like um, having, for example, a twin that you don't know and you are deceased and that twin is taking up your identity or somebody's taking up your identity. And, but that was, it's just like, it's very dangerous. Especially about the knowledge you have. And you could see that with Spider, uh, how more he um, spent time with his avatar there, how more he found out the gruesome things he did and how his dad really is. So, um, but he also, and, and that's the weird thing, I don't know if that was his struggle to get loosened of that avatar dad's grip and the humans um but he taught them a lot about the navi and uh, in one way i didn't understand why jake uh, left the Matakaya because that was where it all started and also Niteri because that was Niteri's home that was Niteri's tribe why would she accept leaving the tribe or the clan and you could see the struggle of Jake's family in the water tribe or the reef tribe um because they are so known to the forest and and of course it is an adaption of them but still it's it's weird but i do like the fact that kiri blossomed in her spirituality and that she has this strong connection with the wave and the animals there and you could see that she was home and although i think she she found herself in a way because that is um what she was and i really loved in the fact that she although her mom was in a certain way carrie was totally involved with nature and I think the memories that she has implanted of her mom I think that made her the ugly duck in the bunch and but I loved it how she developed that spiritual strong connection with the reef because she even saw uh, the real people, especially the kids, they didn't know what they were seeing. And in one way, I think Kiri would do exceptionally good with the real people. And I think she could do a lot more than people think. And in one way, I think she could be the next shaman of the tribe. So. There's a lot to say about this movie and I must say um, I have seen it for a couple of times and um, I loved it. Uh, I loved how the Reef people has been inspired by the Maoris for, from New Zealand. I love that, like the tattoos, how they are. And, when they do a haka they it's 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 makes sense and if you see also like of course the maoris are also connected in this way with water so it is it, it's makes sense to me that they did that and i think it has something also with um the culture of nature tribes and we see that of course uh in the whole world 
and not every Western Western people does understand that. And if I talk for myself, I'm a shaman as well. My grandfather was the uh, shaman warrior of his tribe in Indonesia. I've been told a lot, but because I am half European, half Asian, um, I identify myself with a shaman as all over the world. I have certain things that I do a certain way in off from a certain shaman um, uh, tribe. And I always say I'm the best of two worlds. I have the Western world and the upper Nora half round of the world that uh, if you see what I have in my DNA, um, it's ticked every box of spirituality what is going on in the round, the half first round uh, up. And then I have my ancient side from the southern half round. And you know, it's all coming together and that's the beauty. I always said you can't put me in a box because I'm the best of two worlds. Well, what I love about those Avatar movies is there is a lot of lessons to learn from. And you know, James Cameron did a good job. and. I have, don't know guys if you and I have uh, I have said it also in the first uh, episode that or not in the first episode but in the uh, episode that about Avatar One that I did. Um, if I'm correct, it's still uh, going in theaters, but there is a play from Cirque du Soleil about Avatar. And that is very beautiful. It's um, I know the shows of Cirque du Soleil. I have been to them, so I know what they are and how uh, beautiful and they can have an impact on you. Uh, the show about Avatar calls Taruk, and I do think even you can find it on. Um, YouTube, um, but it is very beautiful, very good, uh, and if you can't see it, my recommendation is to watch it, and um, well, like I said, it's, it's, it really speaks to my heart because of the spirituality and the bond between um, I'm gonna, not going to say humans but the bond between species and nature, mother earth etc and there was one thing that um, about the that earth was dying and now humans want to colonize Pandora as their own and I was thinking this is what we're seeing for centuries that people doing this look at now we, we are already looking for a planet to live on to colonize like on Mars etc and I'm thinking if you were taking care of mother earth mother earth will take care of you i know that for a fact and because i have experienced it and you know it is to me it is stupid that humankind want to it's not stupid but i mean like why can't we be happy with the things we have and that's why i'm always saying too i live a simple life but i love my 
simple life. And it's like also, I'm getting married in, what is it, six weeks? Yeah, six weeks. And everyone will say, oh, you have to do this. Oh, you have to do the hard end. You have to make yourself beautiful, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, but that's not who I am in real life. I'm simple. Uh, like, uh, for example, with my hair. I have long hair. The only thing I do with my hair is put it in a ponytail and that's it. So, the way of living, how the avatars are living or the Navis are living, I can relate to that because I'm the same. I would love to live there. It's beautiful. Pandora is beautiful. And, you know, it's just... You can see that, for example, too, with what the Navis have and what the humans are bringing. I really, really didn't like the technology suits that they got. And in one way, I couldn't eh, recognize it with like the Gundams or like um, the suits in Pacific Rim. But uh, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. And the only thing is, the weird thing is, is um, how things with them has stayed the same, but also changed. For example, the uh, airplanes. Same as in the first uh, movie, but still a bit different. And of course we have that uh, Hoover craft that um, that will help um, the avatars and humans. I also think we can recognize the bullying and teasing of the Reef kids kids of the clan leader to the Sully's kids and that's what I'm saying with there's so much lesson in this movie that um, are recognizable for uh, nowadays and even you can learn from it in a way of um, okay uh, it's mirroring me what I'm doing or what I'm uh, have to go through um, but in the end you see that the Celtic kids have more honor in that way to for example the youngest son Loak who uh, take the blame on him and his father just uh, I mean the clan leader uh, learns that it wasn't his fault it was his son's fault uh, the only thing that I really really I don't want to say disappointed at but they uh, when they talk about um, the big token that is the outcast uh, they it reminded me of free really and the whole at first i would say uh like a will shark those are big too and friendly and uh but also like the wheels in like a humpback will or gray will blueback will um it's so familiar yes in what we see and I think this movie shows you how really how we have to take care of the ocean as well because if we take care of the ocean we will keep more beautiful reef and uh, the animals in it and I know you will say oh yeah 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 we know we know we know but how much trash do we dump 
in the ocean. That's not even funny. And there were, was this kid from the Netherlands who mm, invented a system to uh, get all the plastic out of the ocean. So that's a start. And, but you know, it is once again a very beautiful world. I really I enjoyed the color, the uh, the water beasts, the uh, the reef, and also like I said before, um, how Kiri discovered her being in what she is, and. I think Kiri was the, maybe what she was an evolution of between the forest Navi and the water Navi. And if you take for example spider, spider is human, but is in one way also Navi because he lived like Navi, like a wild kid, you know? And it reminded me a bit of Mowgli. But also, it doesn't make sense, you know, if you live somewhere, you eventually will take up on their traditions, their lifestyle, their everything and um, it's also how you've been grown up with because and I know I don't want to say that for a fact but there was this little girl from I think Romania somewhere in the Balkan states so like Russia, uh, right, what was that? Belarus, etc., etc. Um, she had been, uh, I think she is a Moroccan, and she lived with the dogs on the street, and she became a dog, and she would never ever walk on two legs because she is known to walk on four legs and she couldn't talk because she only talked dog language in a way so uh, but that was that's the same in 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 avatar and i think it's beautiful to see how the Navis, but also the scientists that were on um, on Pandora were so acculturated with Pandora and the Navis and in one way they became one and I think it's very lovely to see that although scientific research and people who live truly in nature, um, I think it's in one way they are super separated, but in another way they are very close because uh, then I, of course there's a difference but I always compare it with um, the spirituality and the scientific side of it for example also you could see in um, oh, what's the movie called the Tom Hanks in the Da Vinci Code, uh, you see that um, 
Christian priests, but were also scientific people who, I don't want to say contradict in religion or spirituality, but it was like they wanted to find a uh, scientific um, proof for it. And that is what we see here uh, on Pandora as well. So it's very um, recognizable for nowadays things and activities. And one, once again in this um, movie you see how cruel humans can be. And they are greedy of what they want to have and in that way i'm very happy my grandfather taught me the things he taught me as a shaman and he always had said to me you're special you're the next shaman in in of uh, in the family or of the island and um I can relate a lot to that, you know, and even, but it's also, for example, like with uh, the healthcare, and we see that also when uh, the scientist wanted to make Kiri better, when she had her seizure, and. I have experienced that the traditional healers and the regular healer healers here in the Western world, the doctors, etc., uh, they don't want to listen to each other and they don't want to share the knowledge they know because of. Um, public prejudice but also uh, they don't have the experience with it and if I talk to them for myself I have a lot of experience of both worlds um, and it's sometimes very difficult for me to except one way or the other and you know it's just also like what we know for decades and even centuries now and you know it's just i think the world will be better off if we listen to each other and not have those prejudices but there will be a lot there has to be a lot to change how people think or how people feel to change the whole effect and it can take generations to go through that and that's not always easy that's not always easy there's another thing i really like about this movie is to see how strong Jake's family is and how they've been living but also how they um, their kids grown up and how they are and etc but also the way if you see of course in in um, in the forest tribe we see that this big tree is Ewa 
Awa and I always have loved Awa. Always. But in this movie we see the underwater Awa. And that's also very special. And I think we need to see what beautiful earth or on a beautiful plant will live on and I think that is one of the, uh, the things that both of the f movies shown us and I love the, how the Navis have their connection with the spirit, spirit animals but also with Ewa and I always say it's I can relate to that very very much so guys let me know what you think about Avatar and especially of course of Avatar uh, the way of the water I loved it because I can identify myself a lot with it and uh, yeah well you, of course you can comment in the comment section and I love to hear what you guys think about it and um, well, thank you for listening or watching you can join me in two weeks for a new episode of my Eileen talks and the next episode um is going to be about the house of dragons i haven't seen it yet so what i'm going to do in the next two weeks is uh taking a look at that i'm very curious about it because you know i love fancy i love uh, dragons so uh even my dog is named after a dragon so that's funny <laughs> and um yeah it's um something that i'm looking forward to so we will see you in the next uh, episode if you like to be a guest with me of that episode uh, just let me know i will sketch you something uh, you only can find my i mean talks on the youtube channel of course and the facebook group and uh, i also have two other podcasts that uh is girl starting track of course and the dutch ready room podcast and those two are also to find on youtube and facebook so i hope to see you soon and um yeah let me know bye P.S. Girls Talking Track is a podcast hosted by me and I will be joined by another female tracker friend from Canada, Amanda Hopper. We will recap every two weeks an episode of Star Trek and at the moment we are at season 3 of Star Trek TNG. Girls Talking Track is to listen, follow and subscribe on Anchor, Google Podcast, Spotify, Amazon Music or one of your favorite other podcast app. The Nail on the Ready Room podcast is a podcast for all my Dutch Trek friends uh, to talk about everything Star Trek. And of course, um, this will be spoken in my um, native language, Dutch. And it's an all video podcast. So, yeah. I will see you in two weeks. Bye.